Hello guys and welcome to this course where we are going to build and deploy a modern responsive ReactJS portfolio website with theme customization feature using React 18 and CSS3. Throughout this course, you use some React hooks like the use state hook, the use ref hook, the use effect hook. We will be using the context API together with the use context hook for consuming our context value. We will be using the use reducer hook, which is mostly going to be used when we get to the theme customization setting or feature. You will know how to use React Portals. We will also be creating some custom hooks to make our lives easier. We will be creating some reusable components. You will know how to use simple contact options on your website. We will be creating carousels with Swiper.js. You will learn how to create scroll review effect during this tutorial. You will learn how to create filterable portfolio or projects. Now, as you are going to see in a minute, this website is going to be mobile responsive. So you will learn how to create modern mobile responsive elegant websites using CSS. Now with CSS3, we have variables. So we are going to use variables in this tutorial, which is going to help us with the theme customization as well. And it's also going to help us prevent repeating ourselves. You'll be learning how to position elements on your website using CSS. You will be learning how to use the Flexbox and the grid system to align elements on your web page. Now we will be using the media queries to make our website responsive. Okay, we will be creating some breakpoints for different devices to make our website responsive on mobile phones, tablets, and desktops. Since we want to achieve a very responsive website, we will be using some CSS units like the RAM unit, the percentage, viewport height, and then viewport width unit, which are very good when it comes to building responsive websites. Also, we are going to design an elegant floating app for tablets and mobile phones for this website. Now, the most interesting feature on this website, in my opinion, is the custom theme. This theme customization feature that we have, right? And we are going to explore that in a minute. But first, let's see what we have on the page. So we have this nav bar, which is fixed. So no matter how far down we scroll, we are always going to have it on the screen. And on the nav bar, we have our logo on the left. You can change this logo to be your logo. You can change anything on the website at the end this is going to be yours right so you can change it anyhow you want okay we have the nav links which are going to take us to the different sections of the page and then we have our theme customization icon right here so we can click it in our model shows up to customize our theme now we have this main header section with our image the name that's going to be your name and this text right here. And then we have two action buttons. Okay. So these two call to action buttons. The first one, which is the get in touch is going to take us to the contacts. And then the second one will bring us to the my projects section or the portfolio section. Now we have the socials here. So these are going to be your socials. So you can click and it should bring you to your social media so your clients can click any of them to view your social media now scrolling down we have this about section with this cool hover effect for the cards okay so we have experience projects setting clients right and then your clients can also download your cv okay they can download your CV and read more about you. We have this cool hover effect with the image here as well. Now let's scroll down to the next section, which is the services section. Here, there's not much to talk about. You can see we have the cool hover effect, which is really cool. And notice the animation on scroll, okay? The scroll review that we have for the different sections, right? 
i'm going to show you how to do that as well let's go to the next section and this is the portfolio section okay now the cool feature here on the portfolio section is the filtering okay so people can filter the different projects that you have here okay so here we have only one backend project for the front end we have five projects okay they can also click the link to go to the github which is going to show you the source code or the project okay a live demo of the project right and the ux we have three projects here okay so in all we have nine projects okay so i'm going to show you how to filter your projects as well now let's scroll down to the next section which is going to be this testimonial section okay and you can see we have auto scroll but we can also scroll or we can swipe okay to see the testimonials okay so your clients are going to swipe to see the testimonials that you have on your website all right here too we have frequently asked questions as you can see here we have some frequently asked questions and if your clients have more questions of course they have to be able to reach you so we have this simple contact section okay so they can reach you via email they can just click and then enter a subject okay all right and as you can see your email okay your email is directly going to be populated so they just have to enter the subject the body of the message and then send okay and you are going to be able to receive this in your email all right so when i come back to my mail as you can see i didn't even refresh you can see the email here right so we have the subject which is this that's what i entered and we have the body okay so it's that simple all right let's go back you can also be reached via messenger okay facebook messenger so on click of this link or on this icon here they can directly message you here okay right and send you a message okay i'm going to show you how to do that as well and lastly through whatsapp okay so on click of that icon all right and lastly we have the socials here in the footer section we have the copyright text here and we have the nav menu or the nav links here as well all right let's go up and let's check out the theme customization feature that we have here okay so we can change the primary color so as you can see all the colors all the primary colors have changed okay as you can see here all the colors all the elements that use the primary color have changed even if i close this let me close the browser okay i'm going to copy your on localhost 300 okay 3000 sorry i'm going to close this and reopen the browser okay pasting the link again and let's see what happens you can see this is the theme that i selected okay let me try that again so that you know this is real and i'm going to change the background as well okay so i change the background and i close this i open the browser again pasting the link and as you can see the theme that we chose persisted okay and we are going to use local storage to save the theme that we select okay so we can change the theme around however we want as you can see and all the elements are going to be updated okay which is really 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 cool and this is the coolest feature on this website at least in my opinion okay all right we have the frequently asked questions section here as well everything should work exactly as we tested in the first time all right now let's see how this is going to look on mobile phones and tablets 
all right so this is how our website is going to look on mobile and as you can see we have this floating nav which is going to disappear when we we don't need it okay so whenever we pause to read anything on the screen this will disappear okay and as you can see the floating nav also updates depending on the section that we are on so as you can see right now we are on the about section and as you can see that's the section that is highlighted as the active nav okay or as the active element i hope that makes sense okay so we scroll down and as you can see we are on the services section right now so that's the services section or the services link updated okay we go to the about and that's what is updated let's go to the portfolio and as you can see that's the section that is updated okay we scroll to the contact or let's click to go to the contact section and that's the updated link that we have all right so everything is looking amazing on mobile okay i'm going to go ahead and open the theme model okay everything is looking amazing okay here too we can of course filter our projects or the portfolio okay we have only one for backend right let me change the theme again and make this red and white background and this is what we have All right now let's see how this is going to look on tablets okay so i'm going to choose a tablet device here and this is how our website is going to look on tablets of course we still can change the theme let me use the pink okay we still have our floating nav and of course it's going to update depending on the section that we are on okay if i stop then and this is going to disappear in two seconds okay and if i start scrolling again it comes back up okay it reappears all right okay so this is the project this is what we are going to build in this course and we have a lot to do so let's get started now this project is going to be deployed at the end of this course and that means we will be uploading the website files onto the internet and make it available for everyone around the world and having used tens of web hosting over the years the one that i always recommend for the quality of service is hostinga so we are going to go to hostinga.com slash egator and this is the best discount link on hostinga and during checkout we're actually going to use a coupon as well to get 10 percent off to get an even bigger discount all right so make sure you use this link for your pages okay all right so this is the hosting our home page it changes over time so don't be worried if this is not a home page or if it doesn't look like this now let's scroll down and see the packages that they have okay so they have one here for web hosting and this is actually their premium shared hosting package okay and this is going for only two dollars and 49 cents per month and with that package we can be able to host a hundred websites we are going to have a hundred gigabytes of ssd storage they are going to give us a free domain name all from this two dollars 49 cents right they're going to give us a free email and a whole bunch of stuff okay which are all free for the premium shared hosting and all for two dollars 49 cents per month all right so i think this is the perfect package for me so i'm going to add that to my cart 
now for the period i'm going to choose the maximum which is the 48 months that is going to give me the biggest discount and here i'm going to enter my email make sure there's actually your email so we enter our email i'm going to choose paypal for my mode of payment and as you can see here our total is 119 dollars 52 cents and by entering eGator as your coupon code you are going to get an even bigger discount you are going to get 10 percent discount of this purchase all right so make sure you use the link and then you enter the coupon code and by doing so you are going to get the biggest discount on hosting guard all right so i'm going to go ahead and submit secure payment let's go ahead and claim our domain name as you can see here they are giving us a free domain name right so let's go ahead and claim that so your domain name is going to be your website name and in this case i'm going to choose igator pro i want the dot com version so let's choose dot com right here and check if that is available all right so thankfully that is available so i'm going to go ahead and claim it a free domain name how amazing is that all right so i have all my details entered i'm going to go ahead and finish this registration so you should make sure you check your email for verification and now let's proceed to work on this project Now this course is not for absolute React beginners. So if you are watching this, I assume you have the basics of React down and you have some tools installed already. But I'm going to still walk you through or show you some tools that we are going to need for this project. And the first tool we need is NPM. Alright, so come to this website that is nodejs.org and install Node, okay? node actually comes with npm we don't need node we are not going to write any node.js code but we need npm which node comes with okay so we are going to install node you can install any of these versions and by installing node by downloading and installing node you are going to have npm which we are going to use to install some packages and do some other things along the way the next tool that we are going to need is vs code now this is not actually required you don't need vs code to write react but this is my favorite editor and this is what i'm going to use throughout the project we will be installing some extensions in vs code as well so if you are using a different text editor you may not have that extension in your editor now the last tool here that i'm going to show you or that i'm going to use is chrome okay so this is what i'm going to use to test our project all right so those are the three basic tools download and install them and let's proceed now that we have the nursery tools installed let's go ahead and create our react app now there's no right or wrong place to create your react app you can create a folder here on your desktop name it react portfolio or whatever you want but i'm going to create mine in my udemy folder here okay in igator right so i'm going to create a new folder and name it react portfolio and i'm going to open this folder with vs code that's the code editor we installed right all right i'm going to close this and i'm going to open a terminal okay vs code comes with an integrated terminal so we are going to click here and then open a new terminal i'm going to type clear to clear the terminal and i'm going to run npx create dash react dash app okay and a dot npx is a package runner and that is going to create a react app for us okay now make sure you have an internet connection and then hit enter and this is going to install 
a react app for us and this is going to take a while so i'll be back when it's all done all right we have happy hacking and that means our react app has been successfully installed so we can do npm start as you can see here and then hit enter to start our development server all right so this project is going to open in our default browser all right so we have our react app running on localhost 3000 as you can see right now there's not an app you want of course so we are going to create our own but before that let me introduce you to a few extensions that we will be using okay now the first one is material icons okay you don't need this but it is just going to give you the right icons for your files okay the second one which is the most important one is this yes 7 plus react redux react native snippets okay there's a really cool extension that is going to give us some snippets for our react components and all that all right now the last one is this auto imports so we install these extensions and now let's proceed now instead of cleaning up the code inside these files i'm actually going to delete all the files in our source okay in our source directory all right so i'm going to highlight all the files here in our source and then delete okay now we don't have anything in our source folder which is cool i'm going to go into my public folder as well and delete all the files in there okay we are going to write everything from scratch good now i'm going to bring in our assets okay from the finished project we have some assets here i'm going to bring in those assets so let me actually bring in the whole folder i'm going to paste it here in our source and i'm going to delete these two folders okay so the dribble and then this new folder we don't need them i'm going to provide you with all these assets by the way so check the attached file for this lecture all right so here we just have some images that we are going to use for this project and we have a pdf as well okay so that's all you need for this project of course you can use your own images all right so i'm going to go ahead inside my public folder and i'm going to create our index html file and this is the only html file we need for this project and with emit i can do doc tab okay and this is going to give me a boiler plate as you can see let's give our project a title i'm going to call this responsive react portfolio website come on with theme customization i think that's a good title right there and in our body we only need a div with the id of root okay so that's emit by the way so i can do hash and then root and this is where our app is going to live okay in between the opening and closing div tag that's the root id this is where our app is going to live okay so now let's go back into our source folder right here and i'm going to create another folder okay i'm going to call this component this is where our components are going to live let me minimize this and inside the source i'm going to create our index.js file okay this is where we are going to link our app to our html okay to our html file all right so i'm also going to create a few more files inside our source folder i'm going to create our app.jsx file 
so i'm going to do rafce and then enter and it's going to give us a react functional component okay this is an arrow function a react functional component as you can see and this is going to be our main app okay our root app component right now you don't need to import react since we are using react 18 but you know what i'm just going to delete okay all right now we have our app components now let's create a file inside the source folder again and that is going to be index.css okay nice now let's go into our index.js where we are going to link our app component to our html root dev okay and here we are going to import react dom from react dom slash client okay we are going to create a constant here called root and we are going to create a root here okay now that's going to be the root div okay the div with the id of root that we have here that's going to be where we want to render our app component right so we are going to select that root id using document i'm going to use query selector here and we give that an id of roots okay so that's our root created and now i'm going to call the render method on this root okay that's our app component that we want to render inside that div and we should make sure we have our app component imported okay and that's it okay so let's save and check out our project again and we have our app okay which is coming from this app component right here okay if i should change this to hello world and save we are going to have hello world all right perfect now i want to have the basic folder structure for the whole project okay so i'm going to create a folder in our source again and i'm going to call this sections okay there's going to have the various sections of our project or of our page and i'm going to create another folder inside sorry inside our source and i'm going to call this context there's going to have our context um, code every code that we have for the context or every file that we will be using to manage our global state and finally we are going to have one more directory in our source folder and that's going to be theme okay our theme folder now we are going to work on the theme context and then the components folder as we work along but for now i'm going to create all the sections that we are going to need for this project okay so inside our sections folder i'm going to have another folder in there called about and this is going to have so inside our about we are going to have about.jsx and i'm going to do refce i'm going to put this inside a section instead a section with the id of about right so we have a section here with the id of about as you can see and we don't need to import react so i'm going to delete that i'm going to create another file inside our about folder okay and this is going to be the css for this section so i'm going to call this about.css and let's make sure we actually import that okay so we are going to import dot slash about okay so these files are in the same folder so we use dot slash and then about dot css this is a css file we need to add the extension now before we proceed i don't think i linked the css file for the index so i'm going to come back here and then import index.css all right let's go back into the sections folder and create 
another section called contact okay this is going to be for the contact section let's create our jsx file so contact or jsx so i'm going to do our fce here as well to create a react arrow function component let's import contact.css which we should create this section also is going to have a section or a section tag with the id of contact okay so that's what we have we should create the css file contact.css all right let me minimize this too now let's create another sorry this should be a folder let's create another folder and this is going to be frequently asked questions folder okay i'm going to create the jsx file rfce i'm going to import frequently asked questions.css there is going to be a section as well with the id of frequently asked questions okay that's what we have um let me type in something here let me have an h1 or an h2 that says the name of the section okay i should do that for the other section that we just created okay so i'm going to copy this h2 and then paste it here this is going to be for contact so that's the contacts section and this is going to be for about about okay now i can close this and yeah i have the css imported so that's it all right now that's the frequently asked questions section let's create another section or another folder and that is going to be floating that's going to be the floating nav okay who is going to be for tablets and mobile phones okay so this is going to be called floating now dot jsx rfce we are going to import our css file okay there is going to be a section actually i'm not sure what is going to be but let's give it a section with the id of floating underscore underscore now i'm not going to have anything in, in there for now so yeah we can just close this okay i should have the css file as well yeah i'm going to close these two close the frequently asked questions as well I'm going to create another folder and this is going to be for the footer section of our web page and let's create our jsx all right fce import footer.css this is going to be inside the footer semantic tag okay let's have the h2 here that says footer that's all all right let's have the css file so i'm going to create footer.css and we have that imported already so we can close these two i'm going to minimize all these i don't know why they keep opening now let's create another folder and i'm going to call this header that's going to be our main header so we have header.gsx refce this is going to be inside a header semantic tag and i'm going to give this an id of header as well let's have an h2 that says header okay don't mind the spelling mistake here or the typo there just let's forget about it for now we are going to import the header.css and let's make sure we create that as well so header.css and we can close these two let's move on to the next section that's going to be the nav bar section okay so we have floating nav and we have nav bar okay there is a difference this one is going to be for tablets and mobile phones 
and it's going to be for larger devices okay desktops and all that now let's create the jsx file so navbar or jsx rfce is going to be inside a nav semantic tag i'm just going to have an a2 here as well that's his navbar okay let's make sure we import our navbar no css which is not yet created so we should do that so navbar no css all right let's close in these two go on to the next section inside our sections folder and that's going to be the portfolio section of our website okay let's create the nursery files so portfolio dot jsx rfce import the css file there's going to be a section with the id of portfolio let's have the h2 that says portfolio and we should make sure we have the css file here as well so portfolio no css let's close them and the last two i think so inside our sections folder we are going to have services the services folder let's create our services so this is going to be our services section so rfce we import services the css there's going to be a section with the id of services and an h2 that says services we should make sure we have our services or css file as well let's close them and the last component that we are going to have or the last folder that we are going to have is going to be the testimonials folder okay so testimonials there's going to be the testimonial section okay so testimonial testimonials dot jsx rfce import our css file and there's also going to be a section with the id of testimonials okay let's have an h2 here We should make sure we have the CSS file as well. So testimonials.css. All right, and our main file structure or our main project structure is all set. All right, now if we check our project from the browser, you can still see only the hello world that we have here, okay? So let's bring in the components that we just created. All right, now I'm going to wrap everything inside a main tag. Okay, and we are first going to have our navbar, and with the auto import, that is why immediately I have the component and hit enter. We have the component imported as well. Okay, so once you have the components here, if you don't have this, you are going to have an error in your browser so after having the components here make sure you import it as well okay and the next component is going to be our header component now the next component that we are going to import is the about component okay so i have the about imported as well we are going to have the services and that's it okay that's it for now let's go back to our browser and we have an error contact what is wrong there okay so let's check our contact component here okay so this should be contact the css okay you guys got me there all right let's see what else frequently asked questions 
All right, we don't have the CSS file. Okay, so that's done as well. And lastly, header. Okay, so let's check our header folder. And this should be header. Okay, good. And that's all. Okay, so let's check. And we have our components. Okay, so now by header about services portfolio testimonials frequently asked questions contacts and lastly we have our photo all right so now we can proceed to start working on these components okay now before we work on the various components that we have i want to have some general styles okay in our index css before we proceed right and this is going to help us along the way we are going to have our variables some browser presets some general classes and all that here okay and this is going to really help us along the way okay so now this is linked to the index.js as you can see here so we can right away for instance i'm going to give the body come on the body i'm going to give that a background of red just to make sure it is actually linked okay and we have a bloody red background right now what i'm going to do is put this side by side so that at least we see what is happening in our browser so come on i didn't save this all right so I'm going to keep it this way for now okay now i'm going to select every element on our page and zero out the margin okay so give it a margin of zero a pattern of zero every element is going to have a border okay so some inputs have borders so give them a border of zero outline of zero I'm going to set the list style for our uh, an added list to none anchor tags have underlines right so let's remove those and that is using the text decoration i'm going to set those to be none we don't need any underlines and i'm going to set the box size and to be border box okay and this is going to make sure every element is boxed in with its styles okay so for instance if we have a hundred pixels element and we give it a 10 pixel pattern that means it is still going to be a hundred pixels contained so the 10 pixel pattern is going to be contained in that hundred pixel all right so that's the basic style that we have for our browser presets or all the elements that we have are going to have these styles applied to them now as i said earlier we are going to have some variables okay we are going to use css3 variables right and i'm actually going to bring them in okay i'm not going to type all these out so i'm going to cut this and then paste it in here okay and explain to you what is happening right i'm actually going to explain these colors when we get to the theme settings okay but for now we have some colors for our project so we have primary color the color white the color lights black color and all that okay we have some variables here which are going to be used for the width of our general container class so on desktops we are going to have 76 percent for the width of the container but on tablets and phones it's going to be 90 percent right we have some border radius here as well and our transition okay our general transition variable here right and we can proceed okay i'm going to talk more about these colors when we get to the theme customization section but for now we can proceed right so i'm going to target my html tag or HTML element and give it a scroll behavior or smooth okay and this is going to you know what I'm going to pull up the finished product.
project okay and it's going to be inside incognito so let's go to portfolio 2.agator.com okay so this is the finished project as you can see here right and the scroll behavior that we have here is just going to make sure we smoothly scroll to the different sections that we have okay so that's the scroll behavior that we have on the html tag let's target our body as well and we are going to change the font of this project okay this font is not nice so i'm going to go to fonts.google.com and the font we are going to use is Mont Serret. Okay, that's the name of the font. And we are going to select from the 300 font width. I'm going to get the 400 regular. I'm going to get a medium. I'm going to get the semi bold and the bold. Okay, and that should be enough so let's actually import this in our html file so i'm going to copy this and go back into my html so inside public i'm going to import this here let me leave a comment and then paste okay beautiful i can close this back and our fonts family okay as you can see here we can change our font family so i'm going to make this smaller again i'm going to paste this and now we have the monserrat font okay so let's proceed i'm going to give our text a line height of 1.6 and a font size of 0.9 rem by default the root font size is 16 pixels so 0 0.9 rem here is going to give us 16 times 0 0.9 14.4 pixels okay so if i should change this to 14 point come on 4 pixels it's going to be the same thing okay so that is the RAM unit that we should be using. And this is going to be very effective when it comes to responsive design. Okay. So this is the unit we will be using instead of the pixel. So as you can see here in the variables, I'm even using it already. Now I'm going to have a general container class here. Okay. So um, let me leave. A comment here general container class all right and from the finished project let's make a reference this is going to help center our elements okay so as you can see we have some margin on the left side and on the right side okay so our elements are centered on the page okay and that is due to the general container class that we have all right so we are going to give this class to a lot of the sections that we have on the page okay so this is going to be called container of course and let's give this a width of the variable container with lg okay for large right here that is nine seventy um, six percent okay so we are using that variable right here right I'm going to give this a margin in line of auto okay so margin on the x axis is going to be auto and a maximum with 1920 pixels perfect now i'm going to copy this comment and we are going to have some more styles here and this is going to be for the sections okay so all the sections on the page are going to have this style so let's select all the sections and give them a pattern 10 rem for the top and then zero for the left and right we are going to give them a background of the color light okay which is up top 
and let's give it a transition okay of the variable transition that we have up top okay we have um, let's see yeah right here we have a transition here which is all 500 milliseconds ease okay right so from there we are going to have you know what first i'm going to select all the even sections that we have okay and for those i'm going to give them a background of color white okay so let's save and you can see the old sections starting from the about this was inside a header tag okay so that is why we don't have that style but as you can see the section starts from the about and as you can see that is the light color that we have okay but the even ones okay so the even ones have the white color so starting from the service the testimonials the contacts those have the um white color right the footer also we used a semantic tag that's the footer semantic tag for that that is why it's by default white all right now let's proceed and i'm going to select a section or the h2 which is directly a child of the section tag okay so from the finished project we are going to have the headings okay this is going to be h2 which is going to be inside the section tag okay directly a child is going to be a direct child of the section tag okay so this one as well we have one here as well these are all going to be direct children of the section tag including this paragraph so we are going to select those let me minimize this we are going to select those and give them a text align of center we want to center them okay now as i said the paragraphs are going to be direct children as well and for those let's text align them as well to the center and give them a margin of 0 0.5 for the top auto for the left and, sorry this should be rem auto for the left and right and four rem for the bottom um let's actually give it a width of 40 percent as well now let's have another let me actually copy this comment we're going to have some more styles here now i'm going to target all the anchor tags okay all the links that we are going to have on the website and you know what from this place okay remember i said the text decoration of every element to be none okay so usually it's only anchor tags or links that have the text decoration or that underlined by default so you could bring that style here okay but i'm just used to having that inside this okay so that is why um i did that okay so first let's set the color to be color white okay and give it a transition as well and the transition is just to smoothen any hover effects that we we will have in the future okay so that is that i'm going to copy this comment again and let's style our headings okay so general heading styles those are going to be the h1s the h2s h3s h4s h5s h6 okay let's give those a line height of 1.1 and a color of color black now that is enough let's proceed and target each one of them so the h1s are going to have a font size of 3 rem the h2s are going to have a font size of 2 rem let's target the h3s font size of 1.6 rem should be good for those as well okay so you can see the font size changed for the h2s let's target the h4s give them a font size of 1.1 rem the h5s a font size of 0 0.95 rem should be good and lastly the h6 okay let's give those font size of 0 0.8 rem 
and i think that is all for the headings okay now let's style our images okay let's have a general style for our images so okay so let's target that class and display block okay let's give those a width of a hundred percent and let's set object fit this should actually be the image tag okay the styles for the image tag so they are going to be displayed block inside of the appearance and they are going to be a hundred percent of the appearance and the object fit is going to be cover now let's have some general styles for our buttons as well and i'm going to give this a class of btn okay let's style this class first we are going to display inline block for all our buttons and give them a width of face content we are going to display flex and align items to the center okay now you may ask why am i displaying flex in the first place and that is because looking at the finished project for instance this button it has two elements okay this text and the icon okay so we display flex which puts them side by side and then we align items to the center now let's give a gap of one rem in between the elements in case there is more than one element inside the button and give them a background of color light okay now the color itself that the text or the icon color is going to be color black and give them a pattern as well a pattern of 0 0.6 room for the top and bottom and 2.5 room for the left and right now let's give it a border of two pixels solid and going to be transparent by default on hover we are going to change the color that is why i set it to transparent and the border radius is going to be the border radius too okay we have some variables for border radius right here okay so that is 0 0.8 rem for the border radius and that's going to give it that rounded edges okay or that curved edges i'm going to set the cursor to be pointer as well all right so that's for the general btn class i'm going to copy this and we are going to have some more styles here so on hover we want to change the background color to be transparent border color to be light sorry that's the variable color light and set the transform translate y so translate on the y axis i'm going to set that to 0 point or negative 0 point 5 frame okay and that is going to give it the micro interaction effect okay that lift that happens when we hover all right so that is the styles for the hover now the button class is going to have additional classes okay some are going to have additional classes so let's have some styles for those as well the first one is going to be the white and for those they are going to have a background of color white okay this is by default light but for the white class we give them background of color white and let's do something on hover as well on hover we want to set the background to be transparent and the border color to be color white right now btn primary okay those are going to have background of the primary color of course and the color one thing let's go back to the finished project and i'm going to show you something if i change the theme background notice the back um the color the text color for our button 
does not change okay and that is why i'm going to set this color to be white okay instead of giving using the variable white color right and let me actually leave a comment here Now let's proceed and have some hover effect for the primary color as well. So on hover of our primary color, we want to set the background to be transparent and the border color to be the color primary color. And the text color is going to be color primary as well. And the last class that we are going to have for our button is going to be sm okay for smaller buttons okay so let's give those a pattern of 0 0.5 for the top and bottom and 1.2 rem for the left and right all right so that is for our general classes okay that is for our general classes now i'm going to have some media queries for our general styles as well okay and instead of me typing it all out i'm just going to paste it so we have one for tablets as you can see here and we have another for phones okay so i'm using 600 pixels and below for phones that means this or these styles are going to take effect below 600 pixels devices and these are going to take effects below 1024 pixels devices okay so we have one for tablets and one for phones all right so we can now proceed to start working on our components so i'm just going to close this file for now and we are going to start with our navbar so let's open our navbar folder and go into a navbar.jsx we already have our navbar inside a nav semantic tag and we can proceed from here okay so Let's have a div here with a class of container, which is the general class that we styled. And also, let's actually have another class here of nav underscore underscore container, okay? And this style of naming classes is called BEM, okay? B-E-M, which is block element modifier. You can read more about it. Now, in here, we are going to have our logo, which is going to be inside an anchor tag. We are going to have our nav links which is going to be inside an added list and lastly we are going to have our theme customization button or icon okay so our link here is going to have our logo which is going to be an image so let's import that image okay so before the css importation i'm going to import logo from let's go up into our assets okay so inside our source folder we have assets and inside our assets we have logo.jpg okay let's check that right here so right here we have logo okay so this is the logo that i'm going to use All right you can use your logo of course and here we can have that logo here okay so we enter javascript mode and we bring in the logo okay let's just say logo now in this and other list we are going to render a list okay but before that i'm going to give this ul a class of nav menu okay so nav underscore underscore menu and in here we are going to render a list but before that i want to bring in a file okay and that is going to contain the list that we are going to map through okay so we have a data array which has objects and each object has an id a link 
in a title okay so that's what we are going to map through and notice i'm exporting it as a default export okay so in our number we can right away import data from data okay since it is a default export you can actually name it whatever you want so you don't have to name it data All right so here we are going to map through that list or that array so we are going to get the data each iteration or each object in there i'm going to call it item and we are going to use an arrow function here return an li okay and inside the li of course we should have our link and we are going to have our href here so on the item object we should have a link it should be the link that we have okay so we have home about services portfolio and contacts right so we get the link and in here that's going to be the title so item dot title and since there is a list we should give this li a key to uniquely identify all the elements or all the items so that's going to be item dot id remember we gave each ob object an id right so that is what we have here as well all right so we save we come back to our project and we see nothing and the reason is because all the links are white okay so if i should go back to our general css file that is the index on comment this come back to our project we should see our links okay so for now let me actually leave that commented all right now let's come back to our project or to our navbar now on click of the logo or the logo link i want the page to be refreshed okay so this is going to refresh the page that is index.html and let me actually give this link a class name of nav logo okay nav underscore underscore logo now this button is going to have an icon to open the theme model okay so that we can customize our theme here is going to be done later but for now i'm actually going to give this an id of theme underscore underscore icon and we should have an icon here so we are going to use react icons okay so let's open a new terminal I'm going to clear this and we are going to install react icons okay so npm install react dash icons dash dash save okay and this is going to install react icons and while that is installing let's go to our browser and search react icons come to this website and you can search any icon you want here okay so i want color okay something that is uh -huh, okay so i'm going to use this we'll just click and it is going to be copied to my clipboard react icons is done installing so we can right away import our icon okay so we are going to import and we are importing this as a named import okay we are importing from react icons okay slash the initials which is io and render it as a component here okay so we save come back to our project and we should have our icon let me make sure i save that refresh and we have our icon okay all right so we are done with the jsx for the navbar okay so let's head on to the css and give this some styling okay so for the css i'm just going to all right this should be good all right now let's target our nav and let's give that a width of 100 viewport width and this is going to span the entire browser screen okay let's give the height so our navbar is going to have a height of 5 frame which in this case is going to be 80 
pixels okay 5 times 16 is going to give you 80 let's display grid and place items to come on place items to the center okay and that is going to place the container that we have okay so this div is going to place it right in the middle okay so that is all wraps the other elements all right now let's give this a background let's give it the color primary background and position this fixed okay so that we always have it on the browser screen it's going to be zero from the top and zero from the left and for now we can't really see because of our image so i'm just going to hide our image for now just for a moment okay now let's give the nav by z index of nine so that it sits on top of everything on the page and give it a box shadow of zero for the x axis one rem for the y axis 1.5 rem for the blur and there is going to be an and there is going to be an hsl a okay so hue saturation lightness alpha the hue is going to be the primary hue come on primary hue the saturation is going to be 68 percent the lightness is going to be 42 and the alpha is going to be 20 percent and let's give it a transition as well the variable transition now i'm going to uncomment this and now let's target the nav container okay so nav underscore underscore container that's the direct child of the nav so let's give this a display of flex okay now our image has been adjusted we are going to justify content to be spaced between let me actually make this smaller so that you see it well and i'm going to align items to the center okay so vertical alignment is going to be that now let me target the nav logo okay which is the link with this image okay with the logo we have here and i'm going to give that a width of 2.5 rem and this is going to be the same for the height okay so height of 2.5 rem as well okay depending on your logo you probably don't need to give it a height you only need the width but for me this is a perfect square that is why I have it this way actually you know what i'm just going to remove the height the width should be enough let's give it a border radius of 50 percent to make it a perfect circle and i'm going to give it an overflow of heading perfect right now let's tell the nav links okay even now i think we can uncomment the link color since we have a background we can uncomment this i'm going to target the nav menu which is the unadded list i'm going to display that to be flex and give a gap between the elements okay so a gap of 3.5 frames should be good and our nav is ready okay now let's target the icon that we have here which is the theme icon so we give it an id of theme underscore underscore icon let's give it a background of transparent and the color of white okay let me give it a font size give it a font size of 2 rem and i'm going to give it a cursor of pointer as well we save and this is what we have and as you can see we have our header section hidden below the header and that is because we set the position of this header to be fixed okay so we're actually going to take care of that when we get to the header section but for now we should have a media query okay so on tablets and on mobile phones i don't want this nav menu or the nav links to show okay so let's hide nav menu on tablets and phones that's the comments so the media queries for this is going to be max width come on of 1024 pixels all right now here we want to target the nav menu and display none okay so if we go 
let me minimize this so that's the breakpoints right there so on tablets and on phones we are not going to have the nav menu which is what we want okay we are actually going to replace that with the floating nav all right and that is all for our nav bar for now that is all for our nav bar and we can move on to the next section or the next component which is going to be our header component okay so let's go to our header jsx i can now close the navbar jsx and the navbar css the data as well i'm going to close that we already have the idea of header so i'm going to have a div in here with a class of container and another class of header underscore underscore container which is going to be specific to this header right since there's the general container class that's going to be specific to this header all right so in here we are going to have our header image or well, let's actually call this header profile and we are going to have the image here so let's actually import this up top so i'm going to import header image that's the name i'm going to give it i'm going to import that from let's go up into our source folder and let's enter our assets and get the image which is the header no jpg okay let me show you real quick so in our assets we have header come on yeah header no jpg this image right here that's what we are importing and that's what we are going to use here so the source is going to be the header image okay let's give this an alt portrait i think that should be good you can give this a class of header profile or header image or header portrait whatever makes sense to you now from here we are going to have an h3 this is going to say our name so the name is going to be hajia bintu below this we are going to have a paragraph and the text inside this paragraph i have it here so i'm just going to copy and paste it okay below this paragraph we are going to have some call to action buttons okay so we are going to have a dip that wraps around those buttons the first one is going to go to the contact section and this is going to say let's talk and the second one the second link let me duplicate this is going to go to the portfolio section and this is going to say my work all right let's save this check out our project and this is what we have perfect now below this we are also going to have that's from the finished project as you can see we have some socials so we should have those as well so below the header cta we are going to have header socials you can make this a ul if you want but i'm just going to make it a div with a class of header socials and in here we are going to render a list okay now let me bring in the data file okay from the finished project i'm just going to drag this and paste it in here all right so in here we have some icon imports okay so as we did in the number you can go to this website and import the icons okay so we imported i already imported some icons and we have an array a data array here with objects okay so each object has an id a link to your social so in this case this is going to be your actual social media link okay so you open your social media you go to profile and then you copy that link and paste it here okay so the first one is going to be instagram and that should correspond to the link since this is going to instagram we should have the instagram icon here so we have twitter which is the second id with the icon twitter that we have we have dribble github and 
the links also go to dribble and get help okay so go to your profile and copy the links and paste them here all right but if you want to follow along of course you can use this data that i have now let's go back and let's import that data okay that data array I'm going to import data from data okay it's in the same folder and now data don't map we are going to map through i'm just going to call this item and we want a link or an anchor tag let's give it a key of item.id the list items the href is going to be item.link and let's give this a target okay i want this to open in a new tab so i'm going to give this a target of blank okay so underscore blank and we should give this a real attribute as well of no opener of no opener no referrer and there's a security measure that we are ensuring all right and this isn't going to be a self-closing okay so in here we are going to have the icon okay so item dot icon which is coming from the array okay so we have the id which we are using as the key right here okay we have the link which is going to take us to our profile and then we have the icon as well right so that is set all right so we save that we come back to our project let's check it out let me refresh this and okay so we have the icons but the same problem we have you know what let me actually uncomment this totally okay so from the general styles since we gave our links a white back a white color that's why we can't we can't see them okay so now we have our icons okay all right so i think we can proceed to the css for this header section okay so let's go to the css and it is already linked so we can right away style it and of course these links should take us to our profile okay so you should have your links and they are going to take your clients to your social media profile all right let's get back and style this header section okay so let me make this smaller all right so we have our header in the header semantic tag so we can just get that that's the only header we are going to have on this whole website and let's give it a margin top okay of five frame which is the height of the number as you can see the header is heading or some parts of the header is heading below the number okay because of the fixed star that we gave it right so we save and now it is pushed down okay now let's actually give it a height of we could do a hundred viewport height okay we could do a hundred viewport height but remember that will mean this um margin is going to make it go a little too much down okay All right so here we are going to calculate 100 viewport height minus the five rem that we have okay and what is going on yeah all right now let's proceed and display this to be grid we are going to place items to the center as well give it a background of color white and i'm going to give this a transition as well all right now let's target the container which is the direct div so that's actually header container specifically and let's display this flex okay that's going to put it side by side which we don't want so i'm going to change the flex direction to be column and it's going to stack it on top of each other let's give it um you know what 
the image is too big so right now let me target the image which we gave a class or the parent which is the div wrapping the image we give that a class of header profile remember let's give it a width of 18 rem a height of 22 rem come on okay so we have that now we can come back here and continue with the styles of the header container now i'm going to align items to the center and also position relative okay we are going to eventually position our header socials to be absolute right and since the parent of this is going to be the header container we should have an we should have a relative position okay so that it is positioned well when we get there all right now let's continue with the header profile and i'm going to give it a border radius of 9 rem for the top left 9 rem for the top right 2 rem for the bottom right and then 2 rem for the bottom left nothing happens or you don't see anything because the image is not making a show so i'm going to set the overflow to be hidden okay now you see everything clearly all right below this um let me actually give this a margin bottom of 1.5 frame okay save and that's what we have all right now i'm going to target the paragraph okay so the header container i'm going to target the paragraph inside of it and give it a width of 35 rem i'm going to text align to be center and give it a margin of zero sorry margin of 0 0.6 for the top zero for the left and right and then two rem for the bottom okay so we have that now i'm going to target the cta which has the two links okay that's the contact link and then the portfolio link so we have the header cta or header call to action that's the class we gave it and we are going to display flex align items to the center and have a gap of 1.2 rem between them you know what we should give them the btn class okay that we have in the index right we have some button classes already so here we can give this that's the let's talk let's give that a class name of btn and primary class okay so this is going to have both the btn and the primary class so we have that styled which is coming from the index dot css okay so i can again on comment come on our link here okay and this btn is coming from these styles that we have okay so we have the btn styles and we had a btn primary styles as well okay with the hover and everything all right i'm going to you're going to have the source code so you can make reference to all these let's go back i'm going to close this all right and also um i think we should give that's the second link we should give that a class name as well and btn and light okay we save come back to our project and that's what we have with cool hover effects as well okay perfect now let's target the header socials okay that's the social media links let's target that and position it absolute it should be on this side okay you know what let me actually give this a background that's the header container i'm going to give it um i don't know a green background so that you see the positioning wall for the header socials so we get the header socials that's the class we gave the tip that wraps around the um, social media links or the social media icons so we position it absolute okay and now that's where it it is at right now but we want it to be zero from the left and zero pixels from the bottom as well okay so 
now it is positioned here we display flex and the flex direction is going to be column as well okay now let's have a gap of one run between the elements all right now i'm going to target the links okay so you've seen how the positioning works so i'm just going to remove this green background we don't need it now let's target the header socials and the links inside of it and give it a width of come on a width of 1.8 rem let's do same for the height 1.8 rem and if you have any element that has the same height as the width you can do you can give it a, a width all right and give it an aspect ratio of one is to one okay so when later you change the width the height is also going to be changed okay and now we can see so i'm going to give this a background of color light let's actually give it a color okay so a color of color black let's display grid and place items to the center okay so that we have our icons in the center and also let's give it a border radius of border radius 2 let's actually do 3 okay which is a variable that we have in the index dot css right i'm also going to have some hover effects as you can see there is no effects here there are no effects on hover since i'm going to give them a hover effect let's have a transition okay so actually you know what maybe you don't know about transitions so let's have the hover effect first and you'll see the importance of the transition once we have the hover okay so on hover of any of the social media links we want the background to be the color primary the text color or the icon color in this case is going to be color white we want to have that micro interaction as well okay so for now let's see we have the color change all right okay so we actually have the transition working because we have a transition on the link okay the general link style that we had in the index css we had a transition there so we don't need to have a transition here as well okay but for the micro interaction i want these links or these icons to shift a little bit when we hover over them okay so i'm going to transform and translate on the x axis okay and this is going to be negative 0 0.5 frame okay so we hover and we have this cool hover effect perfect and that's basically all for the header section on desktops okay now we should have some media queries so we are going to have two media queries okay one is going to be for tablets okay so this is going to be the tablets and we are going to have another one later on okay so let's have the media query um this is going to be max width of 1024 pixels and below and here we are only going to get the header and give it a margin top of zero okay we don't want to give it a margin top on tablets okay so let me shrink this down okay so this doesn't look good right here but we are actually going to render or use the browser render okay to see how it is actually going to look on tablet device all right another thing we want to do is to give it a height of 100 viewport height okay so we save and that's what we have okay so since we remove the margin top we should remember to give it a full height okay remember here we actually calculated and subtracted so we should change that to this all right so that's for the tablets i'm going to have another for the phones okay so for smaller devices and that's going to be um 
600 pixels and below and here actually you know what let me just shrink this to around the um, or should i actually just use a real device yeah so let's let's have an idea what is going to happen here okay so on mobile phones i want to get the header profile and give it a width of 14 rem okay so i'm going to reduce the width and the height as well i'm going to reduce that to 18 rem or 17 rem okay so we have that let me actually give a max width as well of 60 percent and a max height of 35 rem or let's do 35 viewport height instead no rem rem will be too much okay now let's get the header container p or the header container first and then the paragraph inside of it okay the width this time is going to be 100 percent remember it was around 30 it was around 35 rem okay on desktops but here we are setting it to a hundred percent next you are going to get the header cta and give it a gap of one rem okay the gap between these two buttons is going to be reduced a little bit now let's get the header socials and display none okay we don't need that on um, mobile phones okay we're actually going to have it in the footer section so we don't need it here on the header section or in the header section and that's it guys that's all for this header section right here okay so we are done with the number and the header section now let's move on to the next section which is going to be the about section or the about component so i can close these three files and then head into our about okay gsx now i don't think i showed you how the header section looks on tablets so this is it okay this is the header section on mobile phones and on tablets all right perfect so we can proceed to the about section right here all right now we are going to remove this h2 we don't need that and we have a section with the id of about already all right now inside here we are going to have a left and a right side okay so let's have about underscore underscore left duplicate that and we are going to have a right side as well okay inside the left side we are only going to have an image and let me actually wrap a div inside or around this image okay so about let's say profile let's just do portrait so about portrait and let's have our image inside of this okay so we are going to import an image so let's import we're just going to say about image from let's go into our source and into our assets folder and let's get about.jpg okay so that's what we are going to render here so let's enter javascript mode and get about image now on the right side we are going to have an h2 that says about me below that we are going to have a div with a class name of cards okay about cards and right here we are going to have a reusable component that's going to display from the finished project as you can see we have some cards here okay so there's going to be a reusable component that we are going to create in a minute but before that i want to skip this and below the cards we are going to have some paragraph that's going to say something about us so let's have a paragraph and i have the text here the first one is going to be this just copy that and paste and the second one let me just copy that right now as well 
and i'm going to have that inside a paragraph tag as well okay now below this paragraph you are going to have a link to download our cv okay so our potential clients should be able to download our cv so let's actually import the cv okay which is a pdf file so we are going to import cv from let's go into the source assets and get the cv.pdf let's add the download attribute so that we can be able to download this and let's actually give this a class name okay there's going to be a button so let's give it a btn class and we want it to look like the primary um, style okay so it will have that primary color and all that all right now the text is going to say download cv and it is going to have an icon beside it okay so let's go here and you can search download okay any of these you can use but i'm going to use um, i think this is okay so that's what i'm going to click on it is going to be copied to my clipboard come up here i'm going to import that as a named import from react icons library slash hi or hi which is the initials that we have right so i can right away render this here as a component okay so let's save this come back to our project and see what we have and there's it okay our button is perfectly fine as you can see it is already styled because of the general styles that we have for the buttons so we can actually click this and it is going to download our cv okay so that cv or that pdf should be your actual cv so that clients can read about you now let's go on to create the reusable card component before we start this section okay so in our components folder we are going to create card.gsx rfce for an arrow functional component here and let's actually create a css file for this as well so card or css right we should make sure that is imported here we don't need a react import so card or css perfect now this card is going to be inside an article tag article okay and let's actually give this a class name of card and all this is going to do is render a children prop okay so we should make sure we get the prop okay so right away we can actually okay so you know what we can do props right we can get the props come down here and actually destructure it here okay or we can do since we have the props we can do props dot children right which is still going to work okay but i just i'm used to destructuring the props right here okay so i'm just going to destructure the children prop and then bring it in here okay inside the opening and closing tag um children now in case we add another class okay when we instantiate this component or this function in this case we should be able to accept any class name that is put onto it okay that is added to that um, the instance of this function okay of this card function okay so we're actually going to get a class name or we will be expecting a class name prop and let's actually expect an on click prop as well okay since we are going to use this card when we get to the frequently asked questions section i want to have an on click prop here as well okay so for the class or the class name that we have here i'm actually going to remove this and we should do this dynamically okay so let's enter javascript mode we should have the card class by default but let's add any other class that is passed onto the instance of this card com um, component or this card function okay so let's bring in the card prop that we have here okay and for any on click 
prop that we have we should have this on click here as well okay we should just pass in the on click prop that we have okay and that should be it okay that should be all for this card component now this card component is going to have some css okay so um let's get the card class that we had on it and give it a background okay color white that's the background give it a pattern of 1.5 frame a border of two pixels solid and it's going to be transparent by default but on hover we are going to change the color which is going to have a, a really cool effect now the border radius is going to be the variable border radius one okay i think that's around two pixels sorry two rem i'm not sure but it's in the variables okay so you can check it out now let's give it a transition okay so that we smoothly or we have a smooth hover effect or a smooth transition right now on hover i want the background of any card or all the cards to be transparent the border color color is going to be color white we are going to give it the micro interaction effect okay so i'm going to transform and translate on the y axis okay the negative 0 0.5 rem good now some cars are going to be light okay they are going to have a lighter background you're looking at the finished project as you can see here since there is a white background the card should be light okay so that we have some difference or some contrast between the elements right so we are going to have card light for those ones the background is going to be the color light and that's all we need here but we are going to have a hover effect for these ones as well and on hover we are going to have a transparent background and the border color is going to be color light okay cool we should have a media query here which is going to be very simple so media queries is going to be for phones alone here i want to get a card and give it a pattern of 1.2 rem and that's all okay so this is the card css all right perfect so now we can actually use this card component or this reusable card component in our project okay which is exactly what react is about now this section has a data array as well so i'm going to bring that in okay so um let's bring in that array okay so here we have some icon imports okay so of course you can always come to this website and then search any icon you want but i have them here which is what we are using in here okay so we have a data array with objects of course we have the id the icon the title and the description okay so those are what we are going to have um rendered in the card okay so let's come back to our jsx or about jsx and in here which is inside the about cards we are going to have our card okay so first let's import the card components so card from um, let's go up into components folder and card okay and that is what we are going to do here we should actually import the data as well okay so let's enter javascript mode here so data we are going to use the map method here as well or the map function and i'm going to call this item as always okay and in here we are going to render the card components okay so let me have a return here we are going to return the card 
okay and since there's a list we should have a unique key and that's going to be item.id remember we had an id for all the objects right here we are going to have a class name on this which is going to be about underscore underscore card and inside the card okay we are going to have a span let's give this a class name of about underscore underscore card icon and this is going to render the item icon we have that let me actually close this so below the span we are going to have an h5 and that's going to be the title and lastly we are going to have a small tag okay and that's going to be the item description all right so we save this we come back to our project let's check it out and this is what we have so far okay remember we have some styles for our card right here and that is what is taking effect here okay and as you can see from the jsx that we have we added another class of about card okay onto this card component and that is why we had to add this or we had to bring in the class name which is a prop okay which is the prop that we passed onto this card component okay onto this instance of the card component eventually when we get to the frequently asked questions section we are going to have an on click prop as well and that is why i already have it here okay so that we don't encounter any problem when we get there all right so now we can proceed to style this about section okay so let's go to about css and let's style this all right i'm directly going to grab my about container class and display that to be great okay and i'm going to set the grid template columns to be 35 percent for the left side and 53 percent for the right side all right so let me actually scroll so that we see this and this is what we have okay so 35 here 53 here so this together minus 100 will give or will have 12 more remaining so 12 percent i'm going to use that for the gap okay so the space between is going to be 12 percent right cool now we can directly target our about portrait that's the class we gave the dip that holds the image let's give that a height of fit content and i'm going to actually give this a maximum height as well of 40 rem okay depending on your image you can adjust this i'm going to give it a border of one rem solid color white okay and that's what we have let me actually give it a transition of the variable transition okay i want to have some hover effects so that is why i have the transition there let's actually do this right now so on hover i want the border width to be zero okay so on hover we have a cool hover effect with this image all right let's quickly get on the cards okay right here so let's target the about cards that's the class we gave the dip that wraps around the cards and let's give that a margin of 3 rem for the top 0 for the left and right and 1.5 rem for the bottom so we have a decent space there actually i'm going to move this to the right and increase this so that we have a full view of what we are doing i'm going to display grid the grid template columns is going to be three one frs okay so i'm going to repeat the one fr let me have some space between the cards a space of one rem should be or 1.5 rem should be good now let's target the individual cards okay the individual cards let's target those and let's text align to the center now i'm going to get the icons inside the cards so 
give that a class of remove this about card icon that's the class we give it the font size is going to be 1.3 rem the color the text color is going to be color come on color black border radius is going to be border radius 3 give it a width of fit content margin inline margin inline of auto give it a pattern of 0.6 rem i'm going to display flex and align items to the center i save and we have this not a lot of change there but we are working on this now let me set the transition here as well to be the transition variable now i want to have a different style when we hover over the cards okay but this style is going to be for the icons instead of the cards itself so let's target the um about card and on hover of this i want to style the about card icon okay i hope that makes sense so on hover we want to change the background to be color primary and the color okay the icon color is going to be color white okay so on hover we have this all right now let's have some space between the elements here so let's target the um, h5 so card or about card h5 give it a margin of one rem for the top and bottom and zero for the left and right that's enough space all right good now let's target the paragraph text that we have here so about underscore underscore right and the paragraph inside of that i want to have a margin bottom of 0.8 rem okay and finally i want to target this button right here okay so about right and the btn i want to give that a margin top of two points five frame we save and this is what we have okay so our about is styled okay as you can see here we have our micro interaction on hover and all that okay so on desktop we are done so now let's move on to make this responsive on tablets and mobile phones of course we are going to have two media queries one for tablets and another for phones okay so this is going to be the tablets and here let me actually shrink this so that we see surely going to make this a tablet yeah so let's view this on a tablet render so that we see what's happening so this should be on this side i'm going to get the image okay and that's on the left side so let's actually display the whole left side to be none okay i don't want the image this image i don't want it on tablets and mobile phones right and i'm going to get the about container and set the grid template columns to be one fr okay right so it spans full screen basically i'm going to get the h2 okay so about right and the h2 the heading that we have here i want that to be centered okay so text align is going to be centered okay so this is how the about section looks on tablets okay now let's have a media query for mobile phones so for phones come on there's going to be 600 pixels and below let's close this let's actually choose a phone here and let's have the styles for phones okay so yeah i want to get the about cards 
and the grid templates columns here is going to be one of our one of our okay and i'm going to reduce the gap between the cards to be one rem all right now let's get the about right btn so the btn i'm going to push it up a little bit so the margin top is going to be two rem right and i think that's enough okay so that is all for our about section that is all for our about section and it's looking pretty good all right so let's proceed to the next section which is going to be the services section okay so let's get back here now i can close all these files and get into the services section now i'm going to bring in the data array that we are going to need for this section so I'm going to bring in that and there's an array of course of objects and each object has an id an icon which we have all the icons imported here you can of course as usual go to this website right here and import the icons that you want for yourself okay so we have id icon title and description okay now these are a little long so let me actually structure this well so that you see everything well okay so it is it all right and we are going to import this in here okay before our css i'm going to import data from data below that we are going to have a simple paragraph and it's going to say i give you the best in all the services below all right and below this let's have a div with the container class and a services come on container class as well now here is where we are going to render the different services okay so thankfully we already have our card component so we can use it here okay so data dot map we are mapping through the data array so i'm just going to call this item okay and we are going to return the card components okay so card which has been imported here so we are going to return this card components right here okay now since there's a list i'm going to have a key and that's going to be item dot id okay that's the unique id we have in this data remember and let's actually give this a class as well a class name of service come on a class name of service and the light class okay so some cards remember some cards are going to be light or they are going to have a light background so we should have that light class on them okay so that's what we have now inside the card we are going to have a div with a class name of service icon and this is where the icon is going to be rendered okay so item dot icon which is coming from the array okay we have an icon for each of the objects and below this icon we are going to have another div with a class name of service underscore underscore details okay we are going to have an h4 that's going to say the title and we are going to have a paragraph that's going to have the description all right so we save this come back to our project and we have this okay we're just looking pretty good already okay so let's proceed and 
let's style this section which is the services section okay so let me actually close this let's go into the css okay so services.css all right so let's get the services container and let's display this grid okay the grid templates columns is going to be one fr one fr and a gap of two rem for the row gap and four rem for the column gap we save and nothing seems to be happening we probably had a typo for yeah services perfect now let's target the card with the service class and we are going to display flex on that and let's align items to the flex start and have a gap of two rem between the icon and the content that we have here okay now let's target the icon let's have some style for that so we actually gave that a class of service icon okay let's give it a background of color primary a padding of 0 0.6 rem border radius of border radius 3 and a font size of 1.5 rem let's give it a color of white so color white we are going to have a hover effect so let's give it a transition of the variable transition we save and that's what we have okay that's not too bad but we are going to have some more styles so let's proceed and target the so on hover of the service okay on hover of these cars i want to target the icon okay so service icon and change the background to be color come on color light and also change the color as well that's the icon color to be color primary all right so we hover and that's what we have okay now let's have some space between the h4 and the text or the paragraph okay so let's target the h4 so service h4 and let's have a margin bottom of 0 0.7 rem that should do it okay so we have it all right so that's all for the styles on desktops let's have some media queries this is going to be very simple as well so we are going to have one for tablets now here we want to get the services container and we are just going to reduce the gap to 1.5 frame that's all we are doing here okay on tablets so let's actually see this on tablets and this is what we have okay now we are having some overflows probably because there's no rendering well so let's refresh and see all right so this is what we have on tablets now let's have some media queries for mobile phones as well so this is going to be for phones and so here we are going to have 600 pixels so let's change this to i don't know yeah and as you can see we have some overflows already so let's take care of that so on phones let's get the services container and here the grid templates columns is going to be one of our of course so we save and that's what we have and this is looking good already but i'm going to reduce the gap here as well to be 1.2 rem and i'm actually going to get the card okay with the other class of service and here too i'm going to have the gap between the icon and the text here to be 1.2 rem all right so this is what we have on mobile phones okay 
looking amazing. And for the about, if you want the image, if you want to keep your image here, I think it's a little too redundant that we have an image here, an image here as well, and we are going to have our, our image here as well. It's too much. So that is why I removed it. But if you want to keep your image here on this section, that's the about section, of course, you can keep it. Okay. This is going to be your project after all. All right, so let's move on to the next section, which is going to be the, let's see, that's going to be the portfolio section, right? So let's close these services and let's head to the portfolio section.